Hello everyone. Good morning. Welcome to today's webinar on Fiddler Everywhere Meet the New GA version. Before we get started, let's do a quick sound check. If you have joined through your phone, I would recommend you to switch to computer because we have seen few issues while connecting from phone. And if you still can't hear me, please try restarting GoToWebinar Viewer. Or if you have other audio or video problems, don't worry. We will send you a link to the recording soon after the webinar. If you have any questions during the webinar, please submit them using the questions section in the GoToWebinar Viewer. Experts from our team will answer your questions or I can take them up in the end. Finally, we are all working from home and we apologize in advance for any inconvenience caused because of the network connectivity. And in case I get disconnected, one of my colleagues will take over. And I am your host for today. My name is Nishal Reddy. I work as a product manager for Fiddler at Progress Software. I lead new growth initiatives at Progress and have experience working in different product functions like engineering and product management. And in my free time, I like to travel. And while traveling, I love to explore new local cuisines. And this is the agenda for today. We will first start by looking at the evolution of Fiddler. And then I will briefly walk you through what's new in Fiddler Everywhere 1.0, followed by a demo. And finally, I will also introduce you to a new member in Fiddler family. All right, so let's get started. So here's a brief uh, description of what uh, Fiddler actually is. So Fiddler is a web debugging proxy tool which can capture all HTTPS traffic uh, requests and responses between your computer and internet. It can essentially sit in between your computer and the internet to capture all uh, HTTP or HTTPS traffic. And it works on the man in the middle principles. So apart from intercepting traffic, it can also do interesting things like uh, modifying requests and responses through which you can simulate error conditions, reproduce issues, so on and so forth. And Fiddler is used for variety of different use cases most common being debugging applications, be it web, mobile, or installable applications. But Fiddler is also used for other use cases like API development, performance testing, monitoring, uh, malware analysis, security testing, and many more. So now let's see how Fiddler has evolved over time. So Fiddler has been like the de facto web proxy tool for more than a decade. Uh, and the first version was released sometime uh, around 2003 and uh, Eric Lawrence has built a great tool and a great uh, community around Fiddler. And then Telric acquired Fiddler in 2012 and has been offering Fiddler as part of its portfolio of products. And in 2014, Progress acquired Telric and uh, Fiddler team released the first version of Fiddler everywhere sometime uh, around 2019, early 2019. And we've been working on improving Fiddler since then and have recently released the 1.0 version publicly. I hope you have tried it out. If not, I would highly recommend you to give it a try. We've put a lot of effort into building a lot of new and useful features for you. So I would highly recommend you to download it from uh, the Telric Fiddler website. You can download it by visiting telric.com slash Fiddler. Now let's uh, briefly look at how Fiddler as a tool has changed over time, right? So this is how Fiddler Classic used to look like, and it is still available, very functional and feature rich, and it is supported on Windows. And this is uh, Fiddler Everywhere. Uh, this is a screenshot of Fiddler Everywhere sometime in early 2019. As you can see, it was pretty uh, minimal and had very basic features. And finally, this is how it looks now. We have spent a lot of time in not only improving the existing features, but we have also made uh, we have we also made made sure that Fiddler Everywhere layout is familiar to Fiddler Classic users, so that you can feel right at home. So, how did we get here? It all started with you. We did surveys and we got around uh, 2,000 responses from our Fiddler community. We also got a great uh, qualitative feedback through research calls. We spoke to more than 200 users from our community. The feedback has been really tremendous and helped us shape our roadmap and build the tool for your needs. And in our interviews, the most uh, requested core features were 
traffic capture and inspection, followed by autoresponder and supporting uh, composer. Apart from that, we also got requests to make Fiddler more intuitive for improving by improving the layout and user experience. And we also got requests to support other platforms like Mac and Linux. Finally, our users have also requested for collaboration in Fiddler to make it easy uh, to use and collaborate with the teammates. All right, now let's look at what's new in Fiddler Everywhere 1.0. First up, it is now supported on uh, all major platforms, Windows, Mac, and Linux. And the next is traffic inspection and capture. It works in the exact same way as you would use it in Fiddler, but with better reusability and clean and simple design. And in traffic capture, we have also added column level filtering to easily set filters. You can also set or use to create complex conditions using operators like AND and OR to create complex filtering logic. You can also use different string comparison operators like contains, equals, uh, so on and so forth to further create specific uh, filters. You can also filter by uh, request and response headers using advanced filtering. So let's say if you want to uh, you know, filter based on a specific content type or specific uh, you know, data in the body, you can do that using advanced filters. And another major improvement we did in Fiddler Everywhere is to save and organize capture traffic. So in Fiddler Classic, you would have to uh, export this as file onto your local disk, and then it'll be hard to manage them since you'll, you'll have to go and look for the right file and find it and then open it. Uh, whereas in Fiddler Everywhere, we have made it uh, super easy to manage all your saved traffic inside the Fiddler Everywhere workspace itself. So it will be very handy to uh, save files and then access them right within the tool without having to switch context. Also, we have added support for uh, multi-tab support so that you don't have to open multiple windows to uh, you know, uh, debug or look at the capture traffic. Uh, you can easily open the saved traffic in a new uh, tab and switch context within the same window. And another major feature we have improved is Composer. In fact, we've built this ground up to suit to the modern API development needs. You can easily create and execute requests in the all-new Composer. And it comes with integrated request and response view through which you can execute and look at results in the same view without having to switch context like you would do in Classic. So Composer also comes with all the goodness it had in Fiddler Classic. You can open any captured traffic in Composer to replay the request or change any headers and parameters to test the request. So you can easily right click and say edit request until open the request in Composer. Finally, Composer now has support for collections or Composer collections with which you can save and organize requests under common folders. This will make it easy for you to organize the requests that you're testing and also to share it with your team. This will be specifically useful when you are building a new API, you can create a collection and share it with your front end team. This will act as a self-explanatory and executable documentation that can be shared with your front end development team. Or if you are a front end developer who is trying to use a new third party API, you can create a collection with requests for testing. Or better yet, you can also share these collections of requests with your team as well. Finally, we have also added support for autoresponder through which you can mock requests and responses and do other interesting use cases like simulating issues, error conditions, uh, no network conditions, some of which I will uh, show you in, in the demo. And another exciting feature that we have added in 1.0 is collaboration. So Fiddler has long been a standalone tool. And when we spoke with our users from our community, a lot of users have said that uh, while they liked Fiddler, they wanted some collaboration aspects to use it in team environment. So which is where we started working on adding collaboration features inside Fiddler Everywhere. So using Fiddler Everywhere, you can not only capture the live traffic, but you can also save them onto the workspace and you can also share it with your teammates. You can share it with simply entering their email addresses. And similarly, you can also share any composer collections that you create. 
So for example, let's say you are a backend developer who is trying to uh, create a new API. You can create a collection with all the requests and sample headers, and then you can share it with your uh, front end team or with your teammates. And finally, you can also share autoresponder rules. Let's say uh, you are trying to uh, create or simulate an error condition with a bunch of autoresponder rules, then you can create them in your local machine and then you can simply share it by giving it a name and then entering the email addresses for, of your teammates so that your teammates don't have to set up these rules manually or export uh, you know, the rule set uh, manually into their workspace. They can do it uh, easily by just click off a button. So when do you actually need collaboration? right so let's say if you're a developer who is working on debugging an issue then you can probably capture the traffic try to identify the requests that are failing and then highlight them with uh, some marker and then also add comments if needed and then you can share it with your teammate by entering their email id or let's say if you're a backend developer like i said and you're trying to build a new api you can create a composer collection and then share it with your team so that uh, the, the whole team can collaborate on a single collection and then if you're a tech support engineer who is trying to troubleshoot a customer issue and wants to share your analysis with your development team or testing teams, then you can use sharing capabilities to you know, either share a saved session or probably share, uh, create a composer collection with the requests that are failing and probably add uh, the required parameters and body to simulate the uh, error condition and then share it with uh, your teammates. Also, if you're a QA engineer who is trying to test an application, like I said, you can create uh, complex testing scenarios uh, or simulate complex uh, you know, error conditions using autoresponder rules. Then you can create all those rules and then you can share it with your development team or with your teammates. You can also, you can also share any saved or captured traffic um, using the collaboration features. Finally, uh, if you're using any, let's say if you're a developer who's trying to use a third party API, uh, for example, like Stripe or any other third party uh, APIs, then you can use, uh, you can probably create a composer collection with all the APIs that you're exploring and then probably share that collection with your uh, teammate who can, uh, with your teammates who can then uh, use it uh, in the application. So let's now, uh, get into demo uh, I'll, I'll try to showcase all the features that we have that have currently walked you through uh, i'll uh, take a small example of filling a form and i will demonstrate how you can use fiddler to capture traffic uh, debug issues use autoresponder rules to simulate error conditions and then uh, how you can use the capture traffic to create uh, uh, you know composer requests and then convert those composer requests into collections. And I'll also walk you through how you can use Fiddler Everywhere's collaboration capabilities uh, in your team environment. So let's start, uh, let's get started with the demo. As soon as Fiddler is launched, it'll start capturing the traffic. Now let's open browser and uh, open a website. Let's just open telric.com. So now if you switch to Fiddler, you can see that it has started capturing traffic. But if you observe closely, it has only captured the HTTP traffic. It did not capture HTTPS traffic or the secure traffic. So by default, Fiddler is configured to capture only HTTP traffic. But if you want to capture the whole traffic, including HTTP and HTTPS, then you will have to configure Fiddler root certificate so by installing Fiddler root certificate, Fiddler will be able to act as man in the middle and will be able to intercept all traffic, including HTTP and HTTPS. So let's pause the traffic for now. You can pause the uh, traffic capture by toggling the switch on top. So let's try to set up Fiddler's root certificate to capture HTTPS traffic. You can easily set up Fiddler root certificate by going to the settings. Uh, you'll be able to find HTTPS section and simply by clicking trust root certificate, you'll be able to install the root certificate in your machine. Alternatively, if you have not set up the root certificate, then you'll have a subtle marker here, which will give you a hint that you have not enabled traffic capture and simply clicking on that icon will, will show you the details to trust and set up the root certificate to capture HTTPS traffic. So all you have to do is click on trust and enable HTTPS and enter your password. So this will trust the root certificate in your 
machine and it will enable Fiddler to capture all traffic including HTTP and HTTPS. So now let's clear all the traffic that we've captured so far and enable the live traffic capture. So now if you refresh the website and go back to Fiddler, you'll see that it has started capturing HTTPS traffic. You can also set filters to just see the HTTPS traffic. So I'm going to enter HTTPS here and click enter, which will just show me the HTTPS traffic. All right, so now that we have configured the HTTPS root certificate to capture both HTTP and HTTPS traffic. Now let's try to uh, take a simple scenario and try to capture traffic for it. To, let's first clear all the traffic that we captured so far and remove any existing filters. All right, for this demo, I'm going to take a simple form. I'm going to enter the details and submit. I'll capture the traffic and we'll see what else we can do with this. For this example, I've taken a simple contact us form in Telric domain. So I have entered few, uh, you know, test details to uh, fill this form. So let's start traffic capturing and then submit this form. So I'm going to click on contact us button here. All right, so the form was submitted successfully. Now let's switch back to Fiddler to see the traffic that it has captured. So it has captured a lot of traffic. Let's uh, pause the live traffic capture. All right. So I want to first find out the um, request that is submitted when I when I've clicked on the submit button. So to do that, I can easily apply a filter on Telric domain to look at all the requests that were uh, sent and received when uh, while while submitting this form. So I'm just going to type telric.com and click enter. So these are the different uh, requests that were fired uh, by Telric domain. So if you look at all these requests, the first request is for form submit. So this clearly means that this request was fired when we have submitted the form. And this request is of type post. So when we are, so when we entered all the form details and clicked on submit, this request was fired and the type of the request was post. All right, now let me clear all the filters. Now that we have captured the traffic, let's save it. To save the traffic, all we have to do is click on the save button and give it a name. Let's call it Telerik underscore form. So as soon as you save it, uh, it will create a new file under the sessions section. So you can open the saved traffic by double clicking on it. So upon double clicking it, it will open the saved traffic in a new tab. You can easily switch between different tabs or you can open other saved sessions as well. So now we can also uh, highlight any requests that you want to uh, you know, point out or you can even add comments. Let's see how we can do that. So let's say I want to highlight the request that is sent when the form is submitted. I'll first set some filters to find out uh, the request. And then, uh, so this is the request that is sent when we submit the form. So I can highlight this request by uh, right clicking on it and then uh, using the mark option, I'm going to highlight it in red color. And I can also even add comment. I can right click on um, the specific request and add a comment, or I can also use the shortcut uh, M. So let me add a comment saying, this is the request that is uh, fired when we submit a form. So when you enter comments, we'll add a subtle marker uh, to uh, easily point out that there is a comment for a specific request. And once we add comments, highlight the request, we can also share this uh, captured traffic to any of our teammates. So let's let's see how we can do that. So before doing that, I'm gonna remove all the filters that I've set. Uh, to share captured traffic, all you have to do is click on the share button and provide the email with whom you want to share this uh, captured traffic with. So I'm just gonna enter some uh, email of my teammate here and then I'm going to add some optional text. Check this out and then click on share. So now this captured traffic will be shared with the receiver. And once he opens the request, he'll be able to look at all the traffic that I've shared with him. He'll be able to look at the requests that are highlighted or any comments that I've added. So using the share capability, you'll be able to, you know, mark any specific request that you want to highlight or add context using comments and then share it with your team. 
All right. Now that we have seen how uh, you can capture traffic and then how you can save the traffic and share it with your teammate, let's see how you can use Composer in Fiddler Everywhere. So let me close the uh, capture traffic here. And then uh, to open Composer, you have to click on the Composer tab here. Using Composer, you'll be able to easily execute and test any APIs. And to demonstrate how you can use Composer, I'll be using some test uh, APIs here. So uh, here I have a sample REST API for listing the users. So let's copy that URL. And let's paste it in Composer. So now when you click on execute, it will fire a request to this particular endpoint and it will show you the response in the bottom section. You'll be able to view the response in different formats like text, uh, raw, or even in JSON format. So here you can see that this specific request has has returned us with a bunch of uh, user details. You can also change any headers or parameters. So let's say here instead of uh, getting page two, we can change it to page one and then execute the request. And similarly, you can also change the body or headers, so on and so forth. So now let's see another example uh, through which we can create a new user. So here again, I'm going to use a sample REST endpoint. Let's copy the URL. And this endpoint also expects to have a body with the username and job. So let's see how we can uh, create this request, execute and test it in uh, Fiddler Composer. So since I've already copied the URL, I'm going to paste it here. And then, uh, so this is a post request. So I'm going to change the request type by uh, clicking on this dropdown and I'm going to select post here. And like I said, this specific request expects a body with the name and uh, job title of the user. So let's copy the uh, request body and then paste it here. Uh, now, if you click on execute, it will execute the, this request. You can see that uh, this request was successful and it has created a new record. And if you go to the JSON view, you can see that it has returned the ID and uh, creation date. So this is how you can use Composer to, uh, you know, test any APIs uh, real quick, execute them and look at what kind of responses they provide you. So this will specifically be very useful when you are uh, playing with a new API and you want to uh, quickly, uh, you know, test and execute and see what kind of responses it returns and what are the parameters it supports. So, so apart from testing the request, you can also save them. So before saving any request, you'll first have to create a collection. So the collection is essentially a containing unit which can have any number of requests inside it. So let's create a new collection here. So to create a new collection, I'm going to create, click on this uh, new collection button over here. So which will create a new collection. I'm going to name it uh, sample. I'm going to name it uh, sample collection. So now I can save any request inside this collection. So we already have a request over here. Let's save it inside the collection that we have just created. So to save a request, all we have to do is click on save and then select the collection in which we want to save this. So here I'm going to select the sample collection and I'm going to give it a name uh, saying create user and then click on save. So you can see that the request was created inside the sample collection. You can also create subfolders to better organize uh, the requests that are uh, related to each other. For example, here I'm going to create, uh, you know, create a folder called create and then uh, put all uh, rest endpoints that are uh, related to uh, create in this folder. Similarly, you can have uh, many such folders. Advantage of grouping requests inside a collection is you'll be able to share this collection with your teammates or you can have so let's say if you're working on a new API, then you can probably create a collection for that API, which will act as a self-explanatory executable documentation that can be shared with your teammates. So for example, let's say if you're a backend developer who's building a new API, you can probably create a collection and then share this collection with your front-end team who can then uh, you know quickly execute and test it and then start consuming it in their front-end application. So let me show you how you can share a collection. So here I have already created a simple collection for users. So it has, uh, you know, bunch of uh, endpoints uh, like uh, getting users, creating users, updating users, so on and so forth. So you can share, uh, once you create a collection, you can share it by clicking on the share button and then 
just entering the email id here i'm going to enter my teammates uh, email id and then i'll enter some optional uh, uh, description here i'll just say uh, user uh, rest api use this as reference and i'll share it all right so it was successfully shared with the receiver so he will receive the uh, collection in his local instance and then he can open uh, any requests inside the collection execute them and then look at the responses he'll also able to change the parameters you know so it'll really act as a uh, executable uh, self-explanatory documentation that uh, developers can easily get started with all right now let's move to the next uh, part of the demo which is autoresponder uh, before i get there let me just close all the tabs that i've just opened so autoresponder is an interesting feature using which you can do a lot of interesting use cases uh, to demonstrate autoresponder i'm going to show you three examples so in the first example i'm going to simulate an artificial delay in form submission so let's clear all the traffic that we have here so we are going to take the same uh, contact as form as an example so let me just select some uh, options here and enter some sample comments so what you have seen so far is when you enter uh, details in this contact us form and click on con uh, click on submit it will uh, submit your details but what we are going to do now is we are going to introduce an artificial delay when you submit contact us form and let's see how the form will perform will it perform well or will, will it have some kind of uh, error conditions when we do so so to introduce an artificial delay what we're going to do is uh, let's first submit this form and identify the request that is fired when we click on the submit button so there you go the uh, form got submitted successfully now let's switch back to fiddler and let's find out the request that is fired when we click on the submit form so to do that i'm going to set a filter on telric.com and so this is the request that is fired when we click on the submit form so what we're going to do is we're going to create an autoresponder rule using this request so to do that you have to right click on this request and select add new rule which will create a new autoresponder rule so let's edit this rule so if you look at this rule what it actually does is it tries to match the url so when this specific url is matched the any action that you uh, specify below will be executed so you can really set uh, different kinds of actions here by default it will return a manually crafted response that is taken from the captured request but you can also change it to many different things so here instead of uh, returning a manually crafted response we can also probably exit the request drop the request add a delay in the request before it responds with a uh, response or you can also uh, select a, a file from your local machine or you can redirect to a different uh, url so you can really do uh, much more but for the first example what we're going to do is we're going to introduce an artificial delay so to do that we have to select the delay action and then we'll have to specify the delay in milliseconds so let's say uh, after i click submit i want to introduce a delay of five seconds and i'm going to click save and to enable auto responder rules you first have to enable auto responder by clicking on this toggle so now let's see how the form performs when we have a delay of five seconds so let me start capturing let me switch back to the form and let's select some uh, options before we submit it all right now if i click on contact us or if i submit this form what i would expect is to have a five seconds delay and using this we can uh, test if this form performs well if, if there is a delay in getting the response so let's click on this contact us here so if you observe closely here it has not submitted the form instantaneously it is taking some time uh, to be more specific it will take five seconds before it will submit the form so there you go so we were able to uh, artificially introduce a five second delay so similarly you can use uh, auto responder to uh, simulate uh, latencies and see how the application performs typically uh, applications are built for happy path but it will be great to test applications in such uh, low latency conditions to see if they perform well if they show proper loading icon or uh, if the application performs as intended 
So uh, now let's disable this rule. Now let's go to the next example. Let's take the same example of uh, submitting this form and see how does this form perform in error conditions, right? So for this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an autoresponder rule to drop the request when submit form is clicked. So let's create a new autoresponder rule for this request. So let's edit this request. So what it does is whenever we click on submit form, uh, when this URL is matched, it is going to execute the action. So for action, what we're going to do is we're going to just drop the request, right? So as soon as you click submit, this request will be dropped and this form will never be submitted. So let's see how does uh, this form, how does this contact us form uh, perform when we have such error condition. So we have turned on autoresponder and we have turned on live traffic capture. Now let's select some options on submit, submit this form and see how it performs. All right, so now when I click on uh, the contact us uh, submit form, so now when I submit this form, what I would expect is if there is any problem in network connection or if my uh, request is not successfully submitted, I would expect it to show some kind of error, right? So let's click on this contact us button and see how it performs. So I've clicked on contact us and it uh, has started showing some loading uh, icon here which uh, is showing some visual cue that something's happening. But if you switch back to Fiddler, you can see that uh, the request for form submission was actually dropped because, uh, because of the autoresponder rule that we have created. And uh, although the uh, connection, the request itself is dropped, we can still see that the form is stuck in loading condition. So maybe uh, the error conditions are not properly handled in this form. Maybe there is a room for improvement here. You can also test a lot of complex uh, conditions uh, like uh, error scenarios or uh, introduce uh, latencies, delays. So why don't we uh, test another small example uh, to see how does this form perform when we have a 404 error. So to do that, I'm going to create another autoresponder rule. And then I'm going to, uh, instead of returning 200, I'm going to return 404. And I'll say not found and I'll save it. Let's see how does this uh, form perform when we have a 404 error when we submit the form. So I'm going to clear all the traffic that we captured so far. And then I'm going to select some options over here. And submit the form. So as you can see, as soon as I click submit, uh, there is a subtle loading icon, but it is really not telling me anything, whether this form submission was successful or it has failed for some reason. Uh, so clearly there is uh, a lot of room for improvement in the in handling the error conditions. Specifically, what I would expect as an end user is if my uh, submission has failed, maybe showing some error message will help me understand if uh, I should probably try submitting it again or do something else, right? So clearly there is room for improvement here. So let's switch back to Fiddler and see uh, what the traffic that is captured. So you can clearly see that uh, every time I've clicked on that contact us button, it has tried to send the uh, form submission request and, it, and uh, because of the autoresponder rule, we got a 404 uh, not found error. And finally, uh, once you create all autoresponder rules, so let me uh, clear all filters that we have set here. Um, and finally, once you uh, define all autoresponder rules, you can also easily share them by using the uh, share functionality. So all you have to do is select the autoresponder rules that you want to share and click on the share option and you can give it a name. You can give a name for all the rules that you've selected. I'll say uh, test Telerik uh, form and then I'll have to enter the email address of my teammates with whom I want to share uh, these autoresponder rules and uh, I'll just add some optional note. Click on this will share all the autoresponder rules with the receiver so that he can get started fast without having to create individual rule or to manually import them into his workspace. All right, with this, I'm done with the demo. Let's switch back to the slides. All right, so we are happy to help. So if you have any questions while using the product or if you run into any issues, I would highly recommend you to post your questions in our Fiddler community. And on that note, Fiddler Everywhere Forum has a new home.
Uh, you can visit Fitter Everywhere forum uh, using the URL that is shown on the slide. You can visit the forum by visiting community.getfilter.com. So uh, you can log into the forum using the exact same Fiddler identity or Fiddler Everywhere identity. And then you can post your questions or post your feedback. And we love to hear feedback from you. So if you have any uh, feature request or any idea or any suggestion, you can feel free to uh, post them in the community forum. Or we also have a feature request section in our Fiddler Everywhere uh, community. If you go to community.getfiddler.com and scroll a bit, you'll find a section called feature requests. So you can add any feature requests or any ideas you have over there. So we'll make sure that we prioritize them in our backlog and then implement eventually implement them in the product as well. All right. And uh, finally, we are also introducing Fiddler Everywhere Pro plan. Fiddler Everywhere Pro will help you get access to all the basic features that you see in free plan plus unlimited extended features, collaboration, and email support. Fiddler Everywhere Pro was built with individual users and engineering teams in mind to help them unlock full potential with better collaboration and email support. You can find more details about Fiddler Everywhere Pro plan by visiting the following link. It will provide all the details around what kind of features you'll get in the Fiddler Everywhere Pro plan and what is available in free plan. So feel, please feel free to visit the link. So, and with this, uh, I'm towards the end of the uh, webinar to the last section, which is introducing a new member in the Fiddler family. So we have a new member in Fiddler family and it is called Fiddler Jam. So Fiddler Jam is a troubleshooting solution for support and development teams to help them troubleshoot issues in a fast, easy and secure way. So why don't we see a quick demo to understand what Fiddler Jam is and how it helps you in the whole support and development process. So let's see a small demo. For this demo, I'll be using a simple to-do app. Let's add an item. Let's say buy milk and click on submit. So we are not able to add item to the list and it is giving us an error saying the item cannot be added. So now we can use Fiddler Jam Chrome extension to record the logs while reproducing the issue and submit it to the support team. Let's see how we can do it. I already have the extension installed on my browser. So I will open it by clicking on the icon. And the extension itself is pretty minimal to let users record and submit issues easily. Let's look at the options real quick. Users can click on start capture to start the log capture. And then he can reproduce the issue at hand and click on stop capture to stop the log capture. There is also an option to capture screenshots on clicks so that every time user performs a click, a screenshot will be captured. So let's turn on uh, capture screenshots and start recording. Now that the recording has started, we can reproduce the issue by trying to enter few to-do items. Let's add an item to buy milk. Interestingly, the item got added successfully. Now let's try to add another item to buy bread. Okay, now it has failed to add item to the list. Since we have recorded the logs with reproducible, now let's stop the capture and share the log file. Once you click on stop, you will have an option to look at the details captured by clicking on see details. So let's hide the details for now. We also have options to directly share, save them in a local disk or clear the capture to restart it again. Let's click on share captured sessions to share the captured log files. We will also have an option to set password protection, which will encrypt the log file with the given password. Just in case if you are worried about the sensitive information, you can use password protection as an added layer of security. You can also optionally enter your email ID, which will send you the copy of the link just in case you lose it. Now let's enter password, email ID and description. Now we can submit the logs. When you submit the logs, they will be encrypted with the provided password and then uploaded into the cloud storage. And as soon as it is uploaded to a cloud storage, a unique URL will be generated that can be shared with support either through email or in support ticket. So here it has generated a unique URL. Let's copy it and share it with the support team. 
let's open the URL in browser. Customer can securely share the password with support either through email or through any other channel. So let's enter the password here. And once the password is entered, the log file will be loaded. Here you go. The log file will contain all the requests and response that were captured while reproducing the issue. This section on the left lists all the request URLs that were sent by the web app. And the right section contains request and response headers to see what data was sent to the server and the response the server sent. Here you can see that a request to submit to do item endpoint seemed to have failed. Let's click on that request to see the details. So here in the response headers, we can clearly see that a server internal error seemed to have occurred, which could have caused the issue. We can also look at the screenshot that was captured when the submit button was clicked. This gives a clear picture of the state of the UI when issue occurred. We can clearly see that the issue occurred when user tried to enter buy bread to do item. Now support team can also add any comments to add more context to the development team. In this case, support will add a comment on the request that failed, describing the details about the issue. Now that the support team has done some preliminary analysis and added a comment about their findings, they can then forward the log to the development team by simply sharing them the URL. Development team can now analyze the log directly on the web portal. So let's see the screenshot that was captured when the error occurred. So let's click on the item here. Now let's open the request that failed. We can look at the response headers to see why the request failed. We can also look at any comments that were added by the support team. We can further open the captured logs in Fiddler Everywhere standalone tool to do any further analysis, like replaying the captured sessions to test the behavior of the API with the exact parameters that were used when the request failed. Similarly, we can also create autoresponder rules to mock the responses to simulate the issues that the customer might have experienced. All right, with this, I'm done with the demo and I'm towards the end of the webinar. Uh, and if you are interested to uh, try out Fiddler Jam and to use it to optimize your support workflow, you can join our Fiddler Jam pilot program. So Fiddler Jam is currently in a closed beta state. So if you are interested to try it out in your organization or if you want to try it out in your support and development workflows, so I would highly recommend you to join our pilot program. You can join the pilot program by visiting the following link. We'll share the link in the chat as well. So you can join the pilot program by filling out the uh, form in the uh, web page. So once you join the pilot program, we will reach out to you to uh, help you set up with the next steps. And then you can get access to the Fiddler Jam product in your, uh, and then you can use it in your support and development workflow. You can provide us feedback. And eventually when we launch Fiddler Jam, uh, uh, publicly, you'll be able to continue using it or subscribe to one of our plans. So with that, I'm done with today's webinar. Uh, if you have any questions, I can 